Welcome to Allergy and Asthma Network's Patient Learning Pathways. Today we're talking about asthma management to help you know how to best take care of yourself before and after an asthma flare. We will cover topics such as exercise, pregnancy, smoking, controlling your environment, and flu vaccinations. There are many things that affect both the course of your asthma and the ways you manage it. About 1 in 10 people experience coughing, wheezing, chest tightness, or shortness of breath during or shortly after physical activity. Most people feel symptoms about 5 to 10 minutes after exercise starts or ends. This is called EIB, or exercise-induced bronchospasm. It can be a sign of underlying asthma or lung inflammation. And the problem is that many people don't recognize it for the problem that it is, or they simply avoid strenuous exercise. When your asthma is controlled, you should not be avoiding exercise. EIB symptoms sometimes occur due to rapid cooling or rapid warming of the airways, causing the airways to constrict. Doctors recommend 15 to 20 minutes of steady warm-ups before exercise and then a 15-minute cool-down period after exercise. By making a gradual shift in temperature, you can lessen the chances of airway constriction and asthma symptoms. Doctors often prescribe quick-relief albuterol inhalers to treat EIB. These inhalers open up and relax tight muscles in the airways, making it easier for you to breathe. If you have EIB, it's recommended that you pre-treat your airways 10 to 15 minutes before moderate to vigorous exercise with an albuterol inhaler, even if your symptoms are well controlled. You should keep your inhaler on hand to use if you have symptoms during exercise. Keep exercise to a minimum if you have a viral infection, if it's cold outside or the pollen and air pollution levels are high. Schedule your outdoor exercise during times when pollen counts are low. If you're in an area that has cold weather, consider a scarf or mask so that you warm the air you breathe and filter out allergens. Some activities are better than others for people with EIB. Swimming, baseball, golf, walking, biking, and hiking are sports that can be modified as needed. The most important thing is not to let your asthma hold you back. If you feel like you can't be active, talk to your doctor and work to get your asthma under control. Asthma can be unpredictable during pregnancy, and mothers-to-be with asthma have special challenges. Some women find, women find their asthma worsens, and some find it stays the same or actually improves. The key to remember to, is that healthy breathing is vital to a healthy pregnancy. Asthma symptoms such as coughing, wheezing, or shortness of breath are signs that your baby's air supply is at risk. While it's important to be conscious about using any medications during pregnancy, most asthma medications are considered safe for mother and baby. Be sure to check with your doctor about how to manage your asthma during pregnancy. Most women do not experience any extraordinary breathing problems during labor and delivery. You and your doctor can work together to be sure that your baby has a great start in life. It's important to create a healthy home environment for people with asthma. We have some important tips to help you keep your home as asthma friendly as possible. The first step is to say no smokers. We all know that smoking is not good for your lungs, but secondhand smoke is a major indoor pollutant. You also need to monitor the moisture in your home as too much humidity promotes the growth of mold and dust mites. Too low humidity can irritate inflamed airways, so it's best to meet in the middle with a goal of a 50% household humidity. Keep bacteria and mold under control by cleaning dehumidifiers and humidifiers regularly. Mold is a major issue for people with asthma. Use exhaust fans in bathrooms and have them vented outside to discourage the growth of mold. Check for leaks around pipes, empty clothes hampers regularly, and keep your, check your home for mold growth regularly. As the weather cools down, creatures like cockroaches, mice, and other pests move indoors. Since these are common allergy and asthma triggers, it's important to seal cracks around pipes and windows and improve ventilation to damp areas. These pests love food and crumbs, so keep food in your kitchen and dining room and clean up dishes and spills right away. Avoid using pesticide sprays as these can irritate your airways. Keep dust mites at bay by encasing pillows and mattresses with allergen covers to put a barrier between you and dust mites. Be sure all of your gas appliances are vented outside and install an exhaust fan above your stove that vents outside. To avoid moisture from clothing dryers, be sure the outside vent keeps moisture from building up in your laundry area. 
leave your washer drawer open to thoroughly dry the inside. Consider upgrading the filters on your heating and cooling system. The standard HVAC system isn't designed to help you breathe better, so consider upgrading to a high-efficiency disposable filter. Whenever possible, try to remove carpet from your home. If you can't do that, then vacuum them regularly and steam clean them once a year to minimize allergens. Some people prefer to use an air purifier or have their air ducts cleaned routinely. However, the science is still lacking in this area. If you've had a flood, flooding or mold in your home, household pests or construction debris and dust, then having your air ducts professionally cleaned might be helpful. Car exhaust can seep into your house if you warm up your car in the garage or near the house. Having a carbon monoxide detector to, to be sure you're safe is a good idea. In spring, summer, and fall, pollen and mold can lead to an asthma flare. Keep your windows closed and stay indoors from late morning to afternoon when pollen counts are the highest. Some people are allergic to pet dander or dried saliva from pets with fur or feathers. While finding a new home for the pet may be best, keeping a beloved pet out of the bedroom sleeping areas is very important. Replace carpets, upholstered furniture, heavy drapes, and other allergen collectors with hardwood floors and washable furnishings. Keep your home as odor-free as possible. That means reduce perfumes, scented products, candles, and smoke from fireplaces. These tips will help you create a healthy home. Your outdoor and indoor environments can be managed if you know your triggers and take steps to avoid them. Smoking is a major health issue for everyone, especially for people with asthma, yet 21% of people with asthma smoke cigarettes. Cigarette smoke is the second most cited cause of asthma flares. There's simply no other way to put it. There is no safe amount of secondhand smoke. Children with asthma who are exposed to secondhand smoke at home are two times more likely to be hospitalized due to an asthma flare. If there is someone in your home with asthma, please ask all family members to quit smoking. There are a few other considerations for people with asthma. Children with asthma experience the most asthma symptoms and are more often hospitalized for their asthma in the month of September. We call this the September Asthma Peak. Experts think this happens for several reasons. Ragweed, pollen, and mold are highest in the fall, and when children return to school, they're exposed to all new germs, including viruses and the common cold. Children who haven't been taking their asthma medications regularly during the summer are at risk for issues. Talk with your child about their asthma triggers and be sure they know how to use their medications before the school year starts. Asthma and food allergy symptoms often overlap. Studies show that 35 to 50% of people with food allergies also have asthma, and this puts them at a higher risk of anaphylaxis, which is a life-threatening allergic reaction. If you or someone you love has symptoms and you're not sure if it's a life-threatening reaction from food allergies or if it's an asthma flare, Use an epinephrine auto-injector first, and then a quick relief inhaler if needed. Any person diagnosed with asthma and food allergies should carry a quick relief inhaler and epinephrine auto-injectors with them at all times. You can lead a healthy and active life with asthma. Remember that every person's asthma is different, so don't settle for a one-size-fits-all treatment. We suggest that there are five building blocks for better breathing. The first is to become an active player on your healthcare team. Work together to develop an asthma action plan and learn how to follow it. Have regular checkups and talk about what's working for you and what isn't. Ask your healthcare team to watch you using your inhaler at every visit to be sure you're doing it right. Know your asthma triggers. Avoid the allergies and irritants that bring on your asthma flares. If you're having trouble avoiding a trigger, talk to your healthcare team to find a solution. Know your medications. Learn how each one works and what they do inside your body. Take your medications as directed and take them with you to every doctor's visit to discuss whether they're working for you or whether there needs to be a change. Don't stop the medication without talking to your healthcare team. Know your body. Nobody knows you like you do, and every change in your health can affect your asthma. Be sure your doctor knows everything that's going on with your health. And last but not least, live a healthy life. Choose to eat well, exercise regularly, sleep well, and avoid exposure to smoke. Be sure you have an age-appropriate vaccinations, including an annual flu shot. 
As we finish our time today, let's review our key messages. Be sure to exercise. Asthma is no excuse to avoid being active, so talk to your doctor if you're short of breath with activity. If you're pregnant, be sure to take care of your asthma, yourself, and your baby. Follow our tips to create an asthma-healthy home. Quit smoking and or stay away from smoke. And above all, remember, you can lead a full and healthy life. The network has a variety of resources to help you or someone you care about with asthma. You can click on the Asthma Resource List in the Patient Learning Pathways section of the Allergy and Asthma Network's website to find these useful resources. Our Understanding Asthma Guide will provide you with information that you need to understand your asthma. A second link will take you to asthma management tools so you know how to live with asthma the best you can. We have a link to help you understand how you can exercise well with asthma. And finally, we have our Asthma Storylines app. This will help you track your asthma and share that information with your healthcare team. Thank you for joining us today for our asthma management program. You can find more information about asthma in our Understanding Asthma Guide. Allergy and Asthma Network is working every day to end the needless death and suffering due to asthma, allergies, and related conditions through outreach, education, advocacy, and research. Please join us for another Patient Learning Pathway presentation as we partner with you to breathe better together.